Uh, we'll quickly talk about diagonaliz diagonalization because uh, all the hard work comes with the eigenvalue eigenvector problem. Um, so it's easy to diagonalize if possible once we've covered all that stuff. What does it mean? They were given the matrix A, the square matrix N by N. Is there a matrix P such that if you made, did this little operation, invertible matrix P, such as P inverse A, P equals a diagonal matrix D. Remember what a diagonal matrix is? It's all zeros off the main diagonal. The only non-zero numbers are the main diagonal term. Um, I guess even they could be all zeros, but can't be any non-zeros off the main diagonal. If we could find the P and D, that's called diagonalization. And here's how it works. Yes, you can find the P. The matrix A is diagonalizable if it has n linearly independent eigenvectors. You know, if A is n by n and it has n linearly independent eigenvectors, it is diagonalizable. Um, and we know if it has n distinct eigenvalues that, that they are then all linearly independent of each other. So that's a sufficient condition. If they're all distinct, then you can diagonalize them. If they're not distinct, there's some repeated, we don't know ahead of time, we have to do that hard work that I covered in the previous video of seeing how many linearly independent eigenvectors you get for repeated eigenvalues. Um, how do you find how do you find the P once you say that it is diagonalizable? It, P is just made up of the eigenvectors. Each of these Ks is an eigenvector. Remember the eigenvectors were column matrices or column vectors. So each column of this P is that or those Ks. And what is D? D is just a matrix, a diagonal matrix where the diagonal elements are the eigenvalues. So you already know what D is. You have distinct eigenvalues anyway. You know what D is before you do any work, as soon as you have the eigenvalues. Um, yeah, the D's diagonal elements are just the eigenvalues of A. The order must match this order. That's the only kind of restraint. So once you've done the work of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and you get N linearly independent eigenvectors, finding P and D are easy. Here's, here's something I think is funny, you know, when I taught this. This, this little thing would be put on formula sheets when I gave exams. And I would tell my class, when I taught this, you will never have to do this operation. Don't do it. This is not how you find D. Don't, don't invert a matrix and do this three matrix multiple. That's a lot of work to do during an exam. The D is just made up of the eigenvalue. And every single semester, at least one student would get all wrapped up on an exam trying to do this operation. Why? Because they saw it on a formula sheet, so they thought they'd probably have to do it. Um, I shouldn't get such glee out of it. When I give you explicit warning during the class not to ever do that, and they still do that, I kind of don't mind it. <laughs> Let's do an example, a couple of examples. Actually, maybe just one again. Uh, say here's our A. So we find the eigenvalues the way we do. It leads to a quadratic. In this case, it can be factored. We don't have to use the quadratic formula. Eigenvalues are zero and six. They are distinct. So we know right there it's going to be diagonalizable. Go through the work of finding the eigen 
vectors and we get this, five minus four, one minus two. Um, how to go about this are in previous videos and I'm not gonna repeat that kind of stuff. So I found the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. I know it's diagonal, I know A is diagonalizable. In fact, the matrix P is made up of these eigenvectors. So five minus four there and one minus two here, that's what P is. And this guy corresponded to that eigenvalue. And this guy on the right corresponded to that eigenvalue. So, so it's zero there for the first eigenvalue and six there for the second. The order of these things must match. Another legitimate, legitimate answer would have been one minus two over here and five minus four over here. If I put the six up here and the zero down there, they just have to correspond. You have to match, the order must match, but either way would have been correct. Um, here's kind of a trick. If A is already diagonal, like we did this little problem before, then I know D is equal to A, it's already diagonal, and the P is just the identity matrix. So I would know, I, in that case, I wouldn't have to calculate all the eigenvectors. It's just 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. P e is just eigenvalues, or the diagonal elements, which are the eigenvalues. So that's diagonalization. Next subject in the whole matrix thing is systems of differential equations. We'll talk about that, and we're really only going to solve homogeneous systems, um, but we use matrix methods. That will be the last sort of subject in matrices and this whole module, I guess, module two.